Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Friday the 16th of August and this quick look at the week ahead beginning the 19th of August and it's been a rather turbulent week for global equity markets. We've seen big falls, big one day falls and we've also seen um, significant rebounds. You can certainly see that borne out in this S&P 500 chart that I have on the screen in front of me right now and at the moment we're experiencing a little bit of a rebound after the big falls that we saw on Wednesday. So what's caused this volatility? Well it's certainly um, been driven largely by the bond market particularly inversions in the yield curve for UK debt, UK gilts and US government debt and particularly big falls in the value of the long term long term government debt particularly the US 30 year which uh, dropped below the 2% level for the first time ever we are seeing a little bit of a rebound in that today hence the rebound that we're seeing in equity markets I want to say a rebound in that I'm, I'm meaning a rebound in yields and not a rebound in prices um, so we're seeing a little bit of a rebound in equity markets but there is no question that the narrative has changed a little bit over the course of the past few days um, with respect to some of the geopolitical concerns which are still valid obviously events in Hong Kong US China trade the threat of escalation we have seen um, President Trump announce delays to some of the new tariffs on Chinese goods um, into the US but nonetheless it still means that um, there's going to be more Chinese goods tariffed from the 1st of September than was the case on the 1st of August. So, and while some of these tariffs have been delayed till the 15th of December, the um, relationship, shall we say, between the US administration and China has become a little bit more strained of late. But it's really the movements in the yield curve that I think have really um, dominated headlines over the course of the past few days. And as such, the question facing investors is whether the inversions we're seeing is because of the risks of an approaching recession, which based on recent US data looks unlikely, or because interest rates are so low and in a lot of cases negative that investors are not only looking for yield anywhere they can find it, or whether they're looking out to price out recession risk, particularly in areas like Europe and China. I would argue there's an element of deflation risk taking place as well. Um, I think there's an element of all three in terms of what's driving bond prices higher and what's driving bond yields lower. But certainly I think there's also a case of a hunt for yield. And if you look at US yields, you look at UK yields, they're one of the few areas of the bond market that is actually still in positive territory. We've gone in the space of the past week from 14 trillion dollars of negative yielding bonds to 16 trillion dollars of negative yielding bonds. So I think there is an element of investors looking for a haven against deflation. So what does that mean for equity markets and more to the point what does it mean for central banks because certainly in the context of what we've seen this week German economic data continues to look pretty weak and in the context of the week ahead, we've got some important PMIs coming out as well as the latest German IFO business climate survey as well. Um, but we've also got increased speculation that the European Central Bank is likely to um, do a much bigger stimulus package than markets are potentially pricing in um, when they meet next month. We had the governor of the Bank of Finland, um, Olli Rehn, uh, talk about a substantive stimulus package. The only problem with that narrative is that with interest rates already at record lows, how much more can the ECB actually do without causing permanent damage to the European banking system? And you've seen that really played out in the share price moves that we've been seeing in Deutsche Bank. We can see that here. We are now pretty much near all time lows and we closed at a record daily close for Deutsche Bank earlier this week. The euro has also taken a substantial hit on the back of that uh, dovish narrative from Olli Ren, and you can see that here in this in this euro dollar chart 
in front of me now. I think there's a decent possibility with respect to euro dollar that we can retest the lows of earlier um, this year at the beginning of the month of 110.20. Um, particularly if you look at the if you look at the the direction of travel for US economic data. But the biggest event next week and I think it's going to be an event that's going to be I think it's going to generate an awful lot of Twitter narrative from President Trump is not only the latest Fed minutes which are due out on the 21st of August um, and given the fact that the US Central Bank cut interest rates by 25 basis points in July, the first cut since 2008 and ending a period of rising interest rates that first started in December 2015, I think the minutes are going to point to probably a fairly healthy level of debate as to why the Fed felt it necessary to cut rates by 25 basis points, why there was the level of dissent around that interest rate decision to cut because let's not forget we had two dissenters in the form of um, Eric Rosengren and uh, Esther George who basically dissented to that decision to reduce interest rates by 25 basis points but since then we've had James Bullard who initially voted for a rate cut who was the front runner for the rate cut saying that it's unlikely that the Fed sees the need to cut rates further. Well, that's going to make for an interesting discussion and a to and fro between President Trump and Jay Powell, who President Trump has labelled clueless when it comes to monetary policy. And we have the Jackson Hole Annual Symposium also next week on the 22nd of August. And the, it's going to be, more, I think it's going to be topical in more ways than one. And it's certainly going to drive the direction of the dollar because it's, it's about challenges for monetary policy and an environment of increasingly negative rates. And that's particularly topical given that we've seen um, bond yields move ever more into negative territory. So at the beginning of this year, the challenge was about to how to normalise policy. Um, but that's now shifted to the topic of what other tools central banks have in their locker to come up to deliver with soft landings for those economies that are sitting on the, on the cusp of outright stagnation and in some cases recession. And for me, ultimately, there's very little central bankers can do. China is exporting deflation. If you look at the PPI numbers out of China for most of 2018, they were trending at around about 4 4.5%. This year, they're trending well below 1%. So that's quite a significant drop-off in China factory gate prices and on the back of a, a devaluing Chinese one we can see that with this chart here um, we have retested the breakout point of 698 but the direction of travel is quite clear with respect to this horizontal support and resistance line here while we remain above 698 against the Chinese one then the direction of travel is for a weaker one and if we continue to weaken over the course of the next few days and weeks that is going to put potentially downward pressure on equity markets and it's going to potentially as well um, push a deflationary wave out across the globe particularly if Chinese factory gate prices continue to remain in negative territory and that's what they did earlier this week. So let's look at the key levels on various equity markets. The DAX earlier this week posted its lowest level um, since March and that's going to be a key support level going forward. So let's put that in so that we can determine where that level is. I would suggest it's around about 11,400. No, it's not. It's 11,250, my mistake. So you've got those lows in March there as a very, very key area of support. And then below that, obviously, the 11,000 level, which was the, the January lows. So we've seen a bit of a rebound. We need to get back above this 200-day moving average here. Um, 11,250 on the downside. 11,000, around about 680, 11,700 on the upside is a resistance there. With respect to the S&P, 
this current rebound really needs to take us back above 2,960. We've been back to it once earlier this week. We've come aggressively lower off it. Bear in mind that we've got the 200 day moving average around about 2,800. But certainly I think we're going to continue to chop around in the range, particularly in such a big week for the US Central Bank, the Federal Reserve. All eyes will be on Jackson Hole and the Fed Minutes. So the Jackson Hole Symposium starts on the 22nd. The Fed Minutes come out on the 21st. We've also got some very big data f out of Europe. Um, the France and Germany flash manufacturing and services PMIs for August, which are due out. Now, not to put too fine a point, not to put too fine a point on it. The most recent manufacturing numbers are poor. They're like they're unlikely to improve. So the big question continues to be around services. Will the drag on manufacturing start to bleed into services? Thus far, that hasn't been the case. Um, particularly in Germany, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they will continue. We've also got the German IFO business climate survey, and the last one was a pretty sobering assessment of the German economy. At the last survey, the president of the IFO, Clemens Fust, said that the latest survey saw activity drop to a six year low, pointing to a German recession. We've seen Q2 GDP in Germany contract by 0.1%. The direction of travel for Q3 points to a further contraction in Q3 and that would I think really bear down on the euro dollar. We talked about that earlier in the video. Keep an eye on the very key levels there. 110.20 on the downside. 111.70 on the top side. We've also got the latest CPI numbers out of the European Union. Let's not forget ECB monetary policy is already extraordinarily accommodative. Yields are in negative territory. The deposit rate is minus 0.4. German two-year yields are already minus 0.8 and closer to one, minus 1% 1 than they are um, to the actual deposit rate itself. So the markets are already pricing in a 40 basis point rate cut by the ECB. Um, that, for me, even if they do that, is only going to exacerbate the stresses and the strains in the European banking sector. Another key arbiter of risk is gold. I've talked about that at great length and I've written articles on it, which you can find on the website. But certainly in the, t in the context of the recent up move in gold prices, have a look at this low here, 1480. That was the low that we saw on Tuesday. We also saw a multi-year high. On Tuesday. So 15.30 on the top side, 14.80 on the downside. I would suggest that if we get a break lower, we could well see further losses towards 14.40. But while 14.80 holds, then it's very much a sell the rally type of um, attitude that you need to take with respect to equity markets in general. Um, the, these key breakouts in the Chinese one and the gold price are very key arbiters to the direction of travel for equity markets going forward. While they remain above key support levels, the yuan and gold, then it's very much a sell the rally mentality, I think, as far as equity markets are concerned. On the earnings front, we also have some key announcements from Persimmon, the, the UK house builder. Um, on the 20th of August, they, they sh they've got their first half earnings coming out. And in the case of the US consumer, We've seen some decent numbers from Walmart and some awful numbers from Macy's. We've got Target's Q2, Q2 numbers coming out on the 21st. And again, they can be a fairly decent bellwether of the US economy. We've seen some decent retail sales numbers out of the US, fairly decent ones out of the UK. That's helped the pound. We do appear to be getting a little bit of a rebound in the pound against the dollar. If we break above 122.30, we could get a bit of a run to the upside. But what I'm encouraged with respect to euro sterling, we could actually see further declines there after some very strong gains. This weekly reversal here, if confirmed, could see a very strong sterling rally against the euro. So be prepared for a bit of a sterling short, short squeeze um, and potential sterling gains over the course of the next week or so. So that's it for this week. A bit of a longer video than normal. If you want to keep keep tabs on the news and analysis, 
and the various articles that we've written with respect to um, the markets and in particular this article that I've written on bond yield inversions it's quite useful in terms of whether or not we think that there will be a recession or whether there won't be one or whether investors are just hunting for yield keep an eye on the news and analysis section because that's a use that is a useful source of what I'm thinking but also what my colleague David is thinking as well so that's it for this week thank you very much for listening it's Michael Hewson talking to you from CMC Markets <laughs>